black and white imagery telling compelling stories of segregated societies where black and white communities live side by side. Yvon Alagbe's Yellow Negroes and Other Imaginary Creatures is a cult graphic novel here in French. It's now been published in English. Let's take a look at those arresting images. Yvon Alagbe, its author and illustrator, joins me in the studio. Thanks for being here. Now, I wanted to ask about the title of that book, which is now in English, uh, Yellow Negroes and Other Imaginary Creatures. Now, I think the characters in this book, Alain, Martine, uh, Mario, seem very real to me. What's imaginary here? <laughs> well, it, the, the character does... Uh, they do exist, so it's taken from something that happened in, in my life. So, but um, I had the idea of making this story, and the title came right away with it. Yellow Negroes, that's the main story of the book, because the, the other imaginary creatures, it, it was just a way to, to say that there were some other stories. Now, an overarching theme in this book is the violence and alienation that is present in post-colonial societies. It's difficult to generalise here because each story is unique, each character is unique. Do you think they're dealing more with the wounds of that violence or the scars? Well, um... As I mentioned, this came to to, to me um, in my life, and there was this situation, uh, and I wanted to do something with it. And um, my art will deal with something that I don't fully understand. It, it's a way to explore some some aspect of of uh, reality, of of life, of what you have in mind. I also like the idea of making a story. You know, this story is not meant to show you like nice migrants, of, and I don't think like because you're a stranger or because you're a migrant, you are nicer than other person. You are just a real person, and and you have some maybe nice things in you and maybe bad things also, and it's all mixed. Well, indeed, your depictions of black and mixed race figures are a contemporary example of a long tradition of black models in works of art, something that's been rarely studied in the past. Now the Musée d'Orsay here in Paris is shining a light on the presence of black models in French art, from the revolution to the beginning of the 20th century, featuring painters like Monet, Matisse and Géricault. Erina Gunke and Armel Cole report. Placing models often relegated to the background, up front and centre and in doing so, breathing new life into the work of some of the Western world's most well-known painters. The exhibition, Black Models from Géricault to Matisse, explores the presence of black figures in primarily French art from the late 18th to the mid 20th century. I think it's above all an exploration of history, a history that many French people don't know very well. It's a social, political and cultural history, because we talk about paintings created by notable artists. Géricault, Manet, Delacroix, Matisse, Gauguin, Degas, they're all here. From abolitionist paintings by artists including Théodore Géricault, to paintings simply depicting France's growing black community, and even to the more exoticized representations of artists like Paul Gauguin, the diversity of the selected works reflects the differing and evolving views of black figures. The inspiration behind the exhibition, Manet's Olympia, and the generally overlooked presence of Lore, the black model also in the foreground. Both of these women are relocated from the exotic locales of Orientalist paintings, uh, the, the locations of empire. The maid figure seems to be almost the colleague. Uh, she is proffering flowers, but she's not overtly serving or working or washing uh, her employer. She instead seems to be consulting with her. The exhibition also examines the contribution of black artists to the evolving portrayal of people of color. An entire section is dedicated to the work of several Harlem Renaissance painters, some of whom undeniably influenced Henri Matisse's later works. And for the occasion, French rapper and spoken word artist Abdelmalik will stage a performance at the museum. 
Named after the painting Young Black Boy with a Sword, Amalik Show mixes poetry, rap, and visual arts. Black people are a part of the national community. And talking about them is to make them a part of this country's history, of this continent's history. But the black figure is also a symbolic one. It symbolizes all the people who are relegated to the periphery. Women, people in the suburbs, and those who live in disenfranchised neighborhoods, but also people who live in rural communities. The curators say they hope the Orsay show will pave the way for the stories of other lesser-known black models and artists to be told. Well, we saw Abdel Malik there bringing spoken word to the visual arts. And I noticed that you yourself flag up a writer, uh, the Portuguese writer Fernando Pessoa, in your book and the photographer Seydou Keita. Well, indeed, Yellow Negroes features one person who's not artistic and not fictional at all. And that's a very important uh, figure from the history of Burkina Faso, uh, Thomas Sankara. Can you tell us why it was so urgent for you to incorporate him into your work? Actually, he died when I was 16. Uh, I was not concerned that much at that time. I, I noticed that it was some, someone that seems important for the black um, uh, friend of my, my father. But I didn't know that much about him. And it's maybe ten, a little bit more than 10 years ago now that I rediscovered his work through internet. Uh, and I discovered what he'd done, what he was saying, and I was kind of impressed. And um, one day I made some illustration for uh, for um, dictionnaire La Rousse, and I wanted to to check his uh, biography in in the dictionary, and he was not there, and I was shocked. Like it was like a way to kill him again. Like Blaise Compaoré was there, and Thomas Sankara was not there. So I was shocked, and I, I really wanted to 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 make him known to people that. The, some people know them, but some people don't, and I, want, I wanted him to be known. You know, we had the president that said that uh, African didn't enter history. And in Dean's case, you can see that you, you are trying to take out the African from history, and you are take, uh, trying to steal the uh, African history. And so for me, it was my way to contribute to this history and, and to, to make him a little bit more known to people that doesn't know him. And mm -hmm. he was a very, very strong figure and it still makes sense today to pay attention to what he has done and said. Mm -hmm. There's a troubling quote at the end of your book about migrants uh, where you write, uh, have those who reached the shores of Europe really escaped from hell? Now that's a question we could all be asking ourselves today in Europe. What prompted you to write that? You know, I feel uh, that we are all demons in a way because when those people are trying to escape uh, war or, or poverty and uh, and they die in the sea or you or sometimes they don't die but you don't help them. I feel that we are all some kind of demons taking care of our own business and maybe a little bit afraid uh, to lose what we have got. And in a way, I think that we live because of that, because we are not sharing, because we are not helping. Uh, uh, and I include myself and, and a lot of people that are you know, not mean, but still we are like, just like demons. And, and when I see some, you know, people, it can be kids, w women or men uh, dying like, like this. And, 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 and the question for, for politician or also from, for simple person would be like how to protect ourselves from them. Then I feel like we are living in a kind of hell and that we are demons. Mm. Now, finally, we asked you for an artistic tip and you re recommended another uh, graphic artist, another uh, Bond dessiné or, or comic, uh, Dernier Bond, or The Last Strip, by Alex Barbier, who is sadly no longer with us. What was so special about this book for you? Well, uh, it's... Uh, so this is the, the last book of Alex Barbier, but you can say that uh, Alex uh, Barbier did always the same book. He was, like, uh, always dealing with his obsession and a very strange uh, universe and torture and universe. And, uh, but also very, very personal and moving. And it was really one of... Um, one of the first to 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 make comics um, as a painter, 
because he used the color uh, in a very, very strong way. But also the most important for me, it's like it was really personal and what his work is moving me a lot and showing some aspects of, of, of human that sometimes you don't want to face. But I think that uh, we have to face that okay. and, and maybe uh, artists can help for that. And so he died at the end of January. And, um, you know, I'm not that much into, you know, the cultural actuality, like the news, mm -hmm. the last show, the last book. And then I think like you have to pay attention to what deserve attention. And the work of Alex Pabier does deserve attention. Indeed. Thank you so much. Thank Yvonne you very much Alexby. for inviting me. We'll leave you with a glimpse of Alex Barbier's work. Do remember to check out our website too and you can keep up with us on social media. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this. changing. The news doesn't wait. That's why at France 24, we'll always be there to help make sense of world events. For the best international coverage, 24 hours a day, no matter what, France 24 is with you everywhere, all the time.